Hello friends, welcome back for more of our walkthrough of Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out DLC. We're on part 22. Getting pretty far along here, but we still have a long way to go. Alright, so last video we talked a lot about of our, our material cooler. Um, it's still coming up because it takes a long time for this to fill up. It's especially going to take a long time because I am really running out of water. Um, so I mentioned that you needed a good water setup and apparently I did not have enough. But we do have more to re replenish this, but I'm probably not going to turn this on entirely until we're like maybe halfway filled up or a little bit more. Uh, the ethanol is in here, so our tanks are about, you know, 60% full, which is about what we set it to. So, I don't know. I like that. There was so much going on that uh, it was hard to keep track of everything that needed to happen, so I'm happy with how that went. We'll come back to this, but um, there's a couple things back in the main base that we need to take care of. One of which, like I mentioned, was the water issue. So I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel for water here. So because I stored a bunch of the polluted water that I got from the map earlier, I'm now incorporating that into my water system. And there's also still some more if I need some right here, right here, there, there. But uh, also, if I really needed to, and especially on this map, I could grab this. This is a polluted water geyser, so we could grab that. And uh, we're going to do some things in this video to start taking advantage of the cool steam vents that are on the map. So I'm pretty sure this is one, and I think this might be one too. Let me check. There's a couple of them. Yeah, so looks like those are two, and I think there's even one more right here. So I'm just going to act as if we have two, because it's more common to just have two. So, yeah. We're going to start dealing with those. I guess we might as well just do them all in one big area over here. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start working with those cool steam vents within the scope of this video to increase our water production. Uh, and also we need enough to allow us to start smelting. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. I think I'm just going to do the water part first. And then we're going to talk about a new smelting system afterwards. Because right now we are entirely dependent on our cool slush geyser and our regular slush uh, geyser for being able to use our metal refineries at all. So if we can't, then we're kind of stuck. So I'd rather not be blocked by that. But I think we're going to talk about that in the next video. In the meantime, things that have been going on is I'm going to start getting my space, uh, or rather my rocket area ready. Um, I do have a video that talks about this very much in depth. And I'm not just going to gloss over it and just be like, hey, make this. Uh, so I'll just kind of go over it really quickly. This area right here is going to be an area that's filled entirely with steam. I want it to be surrounded on the edges, not right here because those are going to be steam turbines, but I want it to be surrounded on the edges by metal tiles, and specifically metal tiles that are not going to get melted by my rocket. So they're going to be made out of tungsten, which is why I was saying back here to make sure that you are grabbing your uh, wolframite out of here and sending it back. The way that I'm doing this is I'm just marking everything for sweep after going in there and mining out all of the wolframite except for the liquefiable, so like the ice and stuff like that. I don't want them to bring it back to this bin, but if they find anything and they can sweep anything, they'll bring it in there and drop it off. So that's the idea with uh, getting your wolframite back there and getting it ready for that. So we're getting a little deep in queue as far as the things that we want to do. But yeah, the rocket area is just going to look like this. Big steam area. This will eventually all be metal tiles and there'll be rockets that are on top of it so that when they launch, all their heat goes into the steam and not into my base. So this will get fleshed out, I think, in two videos from now. We need to solve a couple of problems, but this was at least getting a little bit, like, planned out. So that's what's happening over here. All right, let's deal with this water situation. So we have two cool steam vents right here, and I kind of want both of them in the same setup. Um, maybe. Actually, do I want them both in the same setup, or do I want them in different ones? Nah, we should do them in different ones. Okay, so the way that I'm going to deal with this is I'm going to... Ideally, working with something that's dormant is better, but since we don't really have the luxury of that sometimes, we're just going to have to deal with it. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to create a liquid lock to get in here, and I want to leave a little bit of space for suits, maybe just a couple, um, just so that duplicates can get in here and maintain this uh, if there's ever a problem. But, just like our natural gas setup or anything like that, we can just fully wall this off so that this temperature doesn't start getting exchanged with this water. This water is still only at like 28 and inside here is almost 100. So, that's going to be the idea for down here too, is just to create a little bit of an entrance point. But, uh, once I get it all sealed off, if I do want to go back in there, 
Like, the last thing I'm going to do is remove these tiles and then uh, seal it up. But if I do need to go back in there, I can at least use some suits to do so. So since there's already a pool of water here, this is pretty common for a lot of uh, steam, cool steam vent uh, setups, is you're going to have some natural water kind of just sitting down here. So I'm going to get my duplicates in here to flesh out just a brick that looks like this. And this is going to allow us to send our geyser water down into here to both warm up the geyser water and cool down the water that comes from the steam vent at the same time, thus increasing our water output. This will also mean that there's something competing for these, which means that in the next video, we're going to get off of using these for our coolant for our metal refinery. We're going to build a much better setup for that. So yeah, I'm going to do that for one. Since we're going to be capturing both of them, we might as well do it for both. So let's get this other one done too. Let me figure out how I want them to get in here. I think I'm just going to do something like this. It's going to be a little bit weird, a little bit misshapen, but you know. We're all a little weird and misshapen, am I right? Nah, I'm sure you're all I'm sure you're all of great shapes. You're all a bunch of triangles and squares and stuff. There, we could just do something simple like that. Now, the idea with this, if we want to have it exchange its temperature with the really cold stuff that's gonna be coming in, uh, let me actually get rid of some of these tiles. We want it to exchange its temperature with the really cold stuff that's coming in. I'm just going to do something really simple of uh, kind of creating some snaking pipes here. We've done this many times before, but it's just going to come in here and share its temperature a little bit. I don't want to use radiant pipes because I want it to slowly exchange as it goes through this whole setup. I also want to make sure to not unearth or like open up one of my cool steam vents before I'm ready to do so. So just going to kind of snake around like that. That's fine. I mean, I could just have this kind of like go up and down here, so... Sure. Once it gets close to the bottom is where we're going to want to start evaluating its temperature and accelerate the change, because down here is going to eventually be filled up with water, kind of like this. Um, so when our cold water is coming in, uh, we want it to warm up effectively enough to the point that it will be suitable for us to send back and turn into regular water. So something like this. Then I'm just going to do a few tiles of radiant pipe, and I need to leave some space. Whoops, I'm using stuff that I don't have. I want to leave some space uh, because we also might want to pump out the water that's already going to be settling at the bottom of this, but we're going to need to evaluate it and make sure that it is cool enough to be sent out of here too. I don't think I have enough space here. One second, let me, let me back this up just a little bit. There, something like this. And then we can have our shutoff here. Uh, for this side, just kind of have it snake up and down just a little bit. And the evaluation point could be, I don't know, here, sure. So if it's there, then that'll connect to here, which eventually both of those will be sent out on the same line, like that. So, the this looks like a mess, but what the way that it's going to work is... Uh, I'm going to use one water type per cool steam vent. So the left one, just because it's already on the left, is going to be hooked up to the brine. The right one is going to be hooked up to the cool, uh, or sorry, the, po the polluted water from the cool slush geyser. So I'm just going to have it send its uh, contents in here, snake around to cool this room down, and then when it gets down to the bottom, we're just going to use our handy dandy liquid shutoffs like we've used before. And if the water is warm enough on the line that's coming in from the cold water, then we're going to let it through. If it's cold enough from the water that starts out as being hot, we're going to let it through and send it back. So that's kind of the idea with these areas. Um, let me get my duplicates to flesh them out on this planet for right now. Let's see how we're doing over here. We've got some water here. It's not great. Um, I'm going to also make sure that our tanks are ready to start cooling this. So just going to reconnect these lines so that the ethanol starts coming out of those tanks. It'll get up to these evaluation points, and it looks like this is already above 5C. I'm suspicious. Okay, I was like, really? I, I didn't think it would be that warm already, but okay. So, um, if it is above 5C, it's going to come down here. It looks like it thought two packets were warmer than 5C. Then they're just going to come back up here, exchange their temperatures, and then return back to the tank. We'll fix up all this piping here in just a little bit uh, because we're still getting water in here for the time being. 
Um, once that is finished up, we can stop uh, doing that. So, yeah, get rid of all those, too. So, yeah, uh, that's the idea with the uh, ethanol cooling and all that fun stuff. And now that we have some water in here, we could start to send some materials through, but I'm a little bit nervous about sending too many. Uh, either way, we can at least start sending some so we can see the idea. This is one of those setups that doesn't always start up all at once. You might just have to slowly start it up. Um, just continuing our conversation from the last video. The idea is eventually this water will get boiled into steam. The steam turbines will cool it down. It'll condense it back down to water and then it'll send it back out into this vent. So this will always stay at roughly the same pressure. But these the heat that is being exchanged by virtue of cooling the ethanol is being put into here, which goes into steam, which goes into the turbine, and then that recools it. So, yeah, kind of an interesting loop there. Let's get at least a little bit of stuff in here for the time being. Let's see, are we all swept out in these biomes? Not yet. Hmm. I think we got all most of the wolframite, though. Let's find out. Wolf. Yeah, we got most of it. There's still a little bit left. Um, I'm not going to obsess over it right now. Let me cancel all these orders for sweeping so that we can actually start sending some stuff through the material cooler. All right, so here... Same thing as usual, just sweep and all. Um, anything that I get, I'm going to want to... And this is only going to be sweep, sweeping all for anything that's down here in this biome. So let's say, for example, all this stuff is stuff that I want to sweep. My duplicates are going to need to come down here and start loading the automatic dispenser with all the stuff that I say to sweep. And then the stuff that we want to send through the material cooler is going to depend on how much space we have to work with in terms of, like... How, how long it's going to be submerged in the water. So for now, I'm not going to send out through a lot. I'm just going to send through a couple of uh, smaller things. So like, let's say the lead that we find, for example. The lead's going to be pretty easy to cool. Where are you guys taking this? Oh, I forgot to turn this off. Whoops. That's exactly what you don't want to do. Uh, so the lead is going to be pretty easy to cool off. It should cool off quite a bit when it just goes through this small area. And as long as it's within, like, I don't know, 40C or something like that, I'm not going to, like, lose sleep over that. Uh, we still bring in stuff here. Yeah, I forgot to cancel these. See, this is why paying attention helps. Is there anything else? Cancel you. <laughs> I'm just going to take it anyway. I don't listen to you. You don't make my rules. All right, so let's hurry up, duplicates. There we go. Now we're starting to load some stuff into here. So if we do find any um, lead, like my duplicates will sweep up some lead. They'll drop it in here. If it does get sent in here, we can watch it go up the line and actually see this in action. But we won't be able to send a lot of things through yet, only because we just don't have the amount of water that we need. So yeah, there's some. Got some on the line here. It's starting out at about 73C. Hopefully it'll drop to somewhere around 40 at minimum. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, so it cools off pretty quick. Uh, and now that's something that I can use and ship back home. Um, so I'm just gonna say, hey, if we find any lead that gets shipped up here, let's go ahead and, uh, send it back to the home base. Who's suffocating? What's going on? Alright, Nicola, we need to get you out of here. What did you do to yourself? Let's see, what do you have available to you? You have igneous rock, I believe. Right? Well, there's some stands some sandstone here. Okay, we'll just use that. Then he can jump from there to here. So nine. Get out of there, Nicola. Or someone help him out. There we go. Get out of there. Jeez, these duplicates just have no courtesy. Always trying to die. Alright. So yeah, that's the basic idea of the material cooler. Um, it'll get more and more fleshed out over time. I could probably turn my polymer press back on so that I can have enough for my steam turbines that I'm going to want on the other planet. But I'm going to need to give my duplicates some time to flesh all this stuff out anyway. When we're ready to connect up the lines and kind of see this all running, I will unearth this and we'll, we'll get it a little bit further along. We'll make sure our settings are good on all these. Uh, and we'll get this one up too. So just going to do that off camera for a little bit and I'll be back in just a bit uh, to show the kind of finalized setup with this. 
Okay, our experiment of trying to rely on this keeping everything cool is not working, probably because we don't have enough water yet. But we would need to set up a new tank to help cool this. So if you need anything else cooled, you're just going to want to put another tank in here. And this will exchange its temperature with the stuff that's around it. Eventually it'll be submerged in water, but we need more before it's going to be able to do that. At least for the time being, this ethanol is at least cold enough that it'll be able to help us. So let's run this line in here really quick. Man, this is a spaghetti. Just going to fill up this tank a little bit and... Um, then we will get it to circulate in this room to cool this down. The reason that this is overheating is because these aqua tuners are going to take a lot of power to keep running. Um, that's one of the biggest reasons why this material cooler is so expensive and it's so hard to get going. Is because you need a lot of resources before you can really push this. Um, so let's get this tank filled up here really quickly. Hopefully our duplicates can get over here and stop dilly-dallying. Clear all my alerts here real quick. Alright, uh, it's going to take my duplicates just a minute to get all this stuff filled up. Once this tank is about halfway filled up, um, well, I guess we could just, like, outline the rest of what's going to be happening here. So, um, the tank is just going to be a quick closed loop. Um, so it's going to want to exchange its temperatures with a bunch of stuff in here. And then it's just going to come out of the tank like this. Kind of circulate around this area in just a closed loop, so we can definitely set this up here really fast. There's a lot of pipes here. And this one I don't really mind it being radiant pipe because I want this whole area to be cold. Um, going through tile, you don't need it to necessarily be radiant pipe because it'll exchange its temperatures a lot better. So I'll just do radiant pipe towards the bottom since that's where most of the... Um, problem is we can just kind of loop it back and forth like this and again if we have a lot of lead this is really not that big of a deal um, lead is very plentiful we will eventually want to start saving some of it when we start going on our space missions but for right now if we just need refined metal because we're in a pinch might as well just use it okay so I'm gonna get this all set up in the meantime too. back home um, I've had to start dipping into my other polluted water pools to keep my water system flowing uh, we just have too much demand right now, uh, which is going to happen at this point in the game. If you wanted to fix this a little bit earlier, you always could hook it up to this to generate a little bit of extra water. But I'd really rather have it for smelting at this point, so I don't know. It's also fine to just wait. Like, if you can't get everything done right away, you can't just wait until you have the resources. The only thing you want to make sure of is that you don't run out of resources to produce oxygen. So if I was really in a bind, I could use my algae or my rust or something like that. But yeah, we have plenty for right now. So yeah, still waiting for all this stuff to get up. This tank is pretty much full, uh, but this one's not yet. And I still need to connect up the lines. We'll do that here in just a bit. Um, so yeah, give my duplicates just a minute to catch up. Okay, duplicates got everything done. Just going to be sending this cold ethanol through here, and that should hopefully be cooling this area down pretty quickly. You can see we're like right on the verge of where most of the metals will start getting damaged uh, with the materials that they're built out of. So, yeah, uh, getting it cooled down here, that should definitely help out, and then hopefully our water level will rise enough to start submerging this. But there's enough ethanol in here to keep this cold for a little while. At least to cool it down from where it is right now. These have already dropped about 30 degrees, so... Good, uh, good option here. And of course, this is just a basic cooling loop. We're going to use this a bunch more times. But the whole idea is that it will be pushed by this aqua tuner because the aqua tuner is what's keeping this area cold. Um, once this does fill up, I don't know if this will would have been enough to cool all this stuff off. Probably not, but, you know, it was worth trying. Uh, yeah, so let's check back here and see how our steam, cool steam vent areas are coming up. Let's at least get one of these set up here really quickly, um, and let's unearth one of them. The first thing that I need to do, though, is I need to fill this up with uh, some kind of liquid. I don't want this erupting quite yet. Although, if I have uh, stuff coming down here, I guess it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we'll close it up here in just a little bit. But uh, all I'm going to do is the brine that's coming in here, I want to reroute and send it down to 
one of these areas to be cooled off. And I'd rather not have to go through all this chaos if I don't have to. So let me just steal this. We're going to deprive our metal refineries of stuff right now because we have plenty for that uh, for the time being. So I'm just going to run this down. Kind of get it out of the way if we can. There we go. And I'm going to be using insulated pipe all the way down until it meets where it's uh, going to be starting to exchange temperatures with the area that has all the hot uh, steam. I guess cool steam, but if you think about it, cool steam is still hot because it's still steam. Uh, let's route this back up to be sent back into our system to be cleaned and turned into regular water as well. So just all the way up here. Where are these? They're over here. So maybe I'll go to the side. Yeah, let me make sure I've got the right one. Okay, outlet's just gonna run over here. Whoop, that's not the right button. And then up. Come on, game. And there, now we can just merge it with the... Oh no, uh, I don't want that. Now we can just merge it with the line that's already going to be to turn it into regular water. But we need to also make sure that it doesn't get through this unless it's the right temperature. So because the brine that's going to be coming in here is going to be like minus 10 C, we want to set it so that um, we make sure that it does warm up enough before it leaves. So we just need a thermo sensor here and here that are on the tiles right before they head into the shutoffs. So there we go. And if they are, just set up some uh, automation wire here, connect it up to some power, and I am going to connect it up via the conductive wire, because I'd really rather not have to replace those. I've said that so many times by now, you're probably really tired of it. But, oh well, you chose to listen to me. Alright, let me prioritize this really quickly so we can at least get our settings. But the idea of the loop will be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to give my duplicates some time once again just to complete these pipes. Uh, watching my duplicates build pipes isn't exactly exciting. And then once we get there, we'll unearth this and we'll start to hook everything up. I will probably... Hmm, is it better for me to put suits on? Yeah. Let's just be safe and not burn our duplicates. I don't want to recommend somebody be like, Hey, yeah, just go in here without suits on. You'll be fine. Um, then you'll get that person who... Seems to have missed the memo that steam is hot, and they'll run in there and be like, Oh, my duplicates are dying. What's going on? You don't want to do that. All right. So, uh, let me give them a chance to get all this stuff set up. I'll fill up these things with suits, and we'll finish this up and get this all connected to close out the video. So, I'll be right back. Okay, we're pretty much ready to unearth this thing. And notice that I did not build anything through this or dig it up yet until I was totally ready. Got a liquid lock here. Got our suits ready. Just gonna start sweeping all this stuff out of here so we can get it out, but I'll just have my duplicates unearth this here really quickly, and that should pretty much get us going. So I misclick here. So there we go. Actually, what we should do, instead of just digging this out, is we should have them just connect up all these lines like we were planning on doing. So for the um, liquid lock here, I just was rerouting my brine to fill up this area right here. Eventually the brine will come down and cool this all down. Uh, so once that happens, we will start pumping things out. We do need to change the settings on our thermo sensors though. So this line is going to be for the brine. And since I expect the brine to be cold, I'm just going to let it pass through when it's above, say, like 20 C. The other one, I need it to be higher um, because this is going to be the water that's already sitting in here. So if this water is ever below, say, like, I don't know, 20, whoa, not 37. 27 C, not 278. Uh, if it's ever below that, then I'll probably let it through. But the problem is that it won't start detecting until it's up here uh, and getting pumped in. So, I mean, I guess if the water packet is that cold, it'll let it through, but we should be fine. Like I mentioned, both lines are just gonna head back together uh, because if you do send regular water through these lines and into the desalinators or into the water sieves, it'll just pass right through. Uh, so you can just send clean water here along with uh, brine or whatever else that you wanted to refine 
And you should be fine. Uh, so let's at least finally get this on Earth so we can see this all happening. And then once we get this last part built, we have this all tuned up. Everything should be ready. I'll just seal this for good. And uh, that should be it. So hurry up. Alright, now we're unearthed. Duplicants just need to sweep out the rest of this stuff here, but uh, shouldn't take them too much longer. We've got to grab all this other stuff too. And like I'll typically do with any type of sweeping, again, just automatic dispenser. Make sure it's not being swept to anywhere else, so you just kind of have to remember where they are. The only two I should have are these ones and then the ones that are out in space, so they're not requesting. So I know where these are going to be sent to when I ask them to sweep it up. Okay, this is getting a little bit awkward, but I do want to seal this up. Here comes the brine, by the way. So the brine is just going to kind of sit down here, and it'll travel through all these pipes, making the pipes nice and cold, so that when this finally does erupt, uh, we know what's going on. Actually, I'm going to analyze this too, um, just for the sake of knowing what's going on here. So I'm not going to seal this up right away, but if I were to seal it up, all I would need to do is just put a block right there, and that would seal it. Um, so I will do that, but I want to analyze it, and yeah, you can kind of see all this in action here. I guess we can just stare at it until the steam finally goes off so you can see what actually happens. So, yeah, there you go. Should condense right away. Your pump's going to start pumping it out right now, even though it's not particularly efficient, but the water that's in here is too hot for this sensor. So now that it's warming up the water from the, or rather it's warming up the brine, we're now sending brine out at a pretty good temperature here, so like 21C. It might get a little bit too hot at first, uh, but that's fine. As long as you can keep this vent under control, you're not damaging your pipes or anything like that, you should be good. So that's the whole setup uh, kind of running. This one will be running by the next video as well. So yeah, good way to increase our water output while also uh, warming up the stuff that's going to be too cold for us to use for regular water. Now that we have that going, I'm going to deconstruct my metal refineries. And we're not just going to leave it like this. We're going to have another plan to rebuild these in a better way. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that here, though. And in the meantime, I'm just going to start moving these tanks over. So um, I guess we'll just save that for the next video. I'll do that in the next video here right after this. So yeah, since this topic is closed with the steam vents, or cool steam vents, that is, we'll call it good. Thanks for watching. I'll be right back with another video soon. Take care in the meantime.